Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what I'll show you guys is I had a fella, uh, retired police officer, sent me a picture. It's very, very similar to this about three months ago. I told him, well, gee, when I do a finish like that, I'll show you how we, there's two ways to do it. I'm going to show you one way right now. Okay, what you do is you kind of look at these bumps. You, you, can brown, you can brown it and put the textures in the brown immediately, or the easier way for uh, uh, one of you DUI folks is to brown it and then come back with your humps. And I'll show you how we do it. But first, I want to show you uh, what they've got here. Okay, can you see the difference here? Now, maybe I'll even step over here, Jay, and show this wall here. Those, are look, those humps look kind of cloudy. These, these humps here, they don't have clouds. They just have, they have straight and side, straight and side. They're like that. You put the mud on them. I'll show you how to do this too, by the way. And these folks here, they overfloated it. It's not too bad. Uh, I looked at it and I said, well, we'll match the original finish. Uh, well, we'll try to match it as well as we can. This has been painted about 30 times. It's a 100-year-old house. Anyhow, these folks, I'll show you what they did. They, they got the texture a little off, but worse off is they overfloated it where it didn't blend in. I'll show you another piece over here. This just shows how difficult to finish it is. The fellow who did this, he was a licensed guy, but uh, the other guy was a lot closer with his match. This guy put it on. What he did is he put little clinkers on and he, he uh, he jacked this wall up, let's face it. The other guy did a lot better. We don't, the tie-ins here are critical too. Uh, that's what makes his, actually everything makes his look pretty bad. Anyway, we've got some stuff. We're gonna go up on the scaffold. I'm gonna show you how we do it. Okay guys, down here, there's a brown coat. Up here, that's the pattern. And finally up top, that's closer to the finish, but that's, uh, that's heavy floated because that's what I had to do first, and then, then I'm going to come back. Jason and I are going to climb up there, and we'll show you a little bit more in depth. Okay, guys, I'll show you how we apply this pattern, matching the one that they had. Quite simple, actually. Get a foot rest here. Smear it out here. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting these random... And every once in a while, I'll put one diagonally see, because they have them diagonally. Show you one more, one more hawk full. And I take that hawk full, smear it out so I can grab it off my hawk like self. Here, put it because they actually had a few that were like self. Anyway, you see how we do that? Just random guys. Every pattern is done differently. In fact, I'm working with uh, another fellow and I'm saying, dude, you just do one wall, I'll do one wall because we can't even make our own patterns perfectly. And as far as criticizing that other work earlier, Jay said, don't you know that guy? I do. But man, that sure sucked that first pattern where you looked down on at the corner. All right, guys, now after you got your pattern on, a lot of ways to put that pattern on, guys, you take a bucket with water. Now, this got a set, too, guys. We took a lunch. It's set, okay? Now you take water on here. You just put it on and let it, let it drip off. The idea is to soften it up a bit. When we soften it up a bit, say we let these act this wall sit an hour. But if you let it sit a half hour, that's about the right time. So since I let it sit so long, I'm gonna use a little bit more water. And of course, a lot of water will create a very sandy appearance. Less water, less sand. So we're taking it and we're just softening it up. You start from the top, a lot of water and let it drip down. It's going to drip right down the wall. That's okay. Just uh, keep following it. Just you look at the humps and what we want to do is kind of we, we, we want to leave them. We just want to embed them and give it a float finish. A lot of water guys. 
I'll show you a little bit more and then I'll show you the wall that I actually let sit for a while. Actually, I'm almost fin ready to finish. Okay, the corners, these corners are humpty dumpty and wavy. That's what we want to do too. Actually, it's working pretty well right now. I did some other walls and I let them set about oh, a half hour. This, we took lunch and that works just as well. I'll, sh I'll show you why. Okay, a lot of water. What I'll generally do is I'll put the, the, say the toe, and then when this, the heel gets full, I'll use the heel. Kind of like snowboarding, just move it around, move it around, guys. That way you're not spinning your wheels and dipping it every five minutes. And when it dries out, which is going to dry out in a minute, you just re-dip it. Okay, get all the sand out, flip that, get all the sand out, see that? Okay, now we're doing the same thing. This is how we're going to do this whole wall. All day we've been doing this stuff. You got to have your pattern in here first. And this really does it. It's not going to take the pattern out. It's still going to leave it. I can soften it, pronounce it, uh, whatever I want to do. And I'm taking my float at an angle right here to get these. If I take it flat right here, I'll take that dimension out or that little shape. I don't want to do that. A lot of stuff. Uh, you try this, it's uh, a little bit more difficult than it looks. Okay, we're going to go on this other side. All right, guys. Lastly, I'll show you. This is a finished product up here. It's a 30-foot long stretch. And what we had was this to start out with. And again, there's a lot of steps to this. This right here is, is very coarse. It matches what they did over here. Very coarse, except our pattern is more on the money. Now you take a wet sponge float. If I tap all my water out of this. I want this as dry as possible now. And if I still have some water, then I'll just let the wall suck it right out. Okay, now I got all the water out of here. Now, the idea is if you keep going over this heavy one before it gets too hard, you can't do this the next day, guys, but you can do it before this is uh, fully dried. And all I'm doing now, guys, is I'm taking some of the extra grit off. I'm taking some of the extra grit so they don't have to use so much paint to try to fill it. And I'm leaving the pattern in here, guys. And if you folks fancy yourself uh, excellent trowel men, can you take a small swimming pool trowel and go over this? You can do that too, guys. But that's really, uh, it really takes a lot of practice. Uh, usually you folks looking at what I do are do-it-yourselfers. So this way is time consuming, but it gets the results that we want bull nose in all these windows we clean the tape then we pull this we pull this right off and that exposes the window a bull nose just right there you see that guys now all i'm doing is i'm leaving the pattern and i'm softening it up again that's the final result anyhow guys that'll show you how to do some very odd patterns and every pattern is different and we usually could match them all anyway we appreciate you folks watching and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one.